Hello, this is Tom from October CMS. In this video, I will show you how to install and use the October CMS development Docker image. October CMS development Docker image is free. You can use it to explore the platform. When you're ready, you can license your container and convert it to a fully functional development environment. You can find more information on the official development image page. I put a link in the video description. There are several ways to install the image. I will explain how to do it on Windows and Mac OS. I will also show you how to license your Docker container to remove all limitations. Before you begin, make sure that Docker is installed on your computer. First, let me show you how to set up the image using Docker Desktop. This option is the fastest and easiest, although there are some limitations. The main limitation is that all files are stored in the container. So if you accidentally delete the container, you may lose your work. But it's the simplest option to get started with October CMS. The process is similar for Windows and Mac OS. The only difference is that on Windows, you should use the command prompt application. And on Mac OS, you should use terminal. The first step is pulling the image using the docker pull command in the terminal. Next, in the Docker desktop, I go to the Images tab and click the Run button for the new image. In the Container Configuration pop-up, I need to provide the container name and port forwarding options. Forwarding the port 80 is required because, without it, you won't be able to access the installation in a browser. I can now click the Run button to start the container. The container configuration can take a few minutes. When it finishes, I can visit the installation URL and start learning October CMS. To access and edit files in the container, I will use the Remote Containers extension for Microsoft Visual Studio Code. The extension adds the Attach to Running Container command to the command palette. The command opens a new editor window. And I can now see October CMS files, edit the website theme, and experiment with creating plugins. I can also access the container shell. This feature is provided by the Remote Containers extension. When I open the terminal panel in code, it automatically connects to the container. As you can see, I can run PHP artisan commands. I can also access the MySQL database with the command line tool. I will now show how to install the image using the interactive bash script. That's a more advanced option, and we recommend it if you plan to license your installation and use it for some real project. The main advantage of this option is that it provides data persistence for the case if you accidentally delete or break the Docker container. The process is different for Mac OS and Windows. I will first show how to do it on Mac OS. First, I will create a directory for my October CMS installations. I will now clone the repository with the bash script into a subdirectory and start the script. The script asks me several questions about port forwarding in the container name and creates the container. The container configuration can take a few minutes. When it's done, I can visit the installation URL and make sure it works. The script created two directories. The October CMS database directory contains MySQL files for the installation database. And the October CMS files directory contains the platform files. I can open the directory in Visual Studio Code to edit the theme files and explore the platform. To access the container shell, I will use the Docker extension for Visual Studio Code. The extension provides the attach shell command. It attaches the Visual Studio Code terminal to a running container. I can now execute artisan commands and access the database. I can also access the database from the host machine using the command line tools or any other tool. 
The Windows process is slightly different because we need to use the Windows subsystem for Linux for performance reasons. I already have WSL version 2 and Ubuntu distribution installed on my computer, and I configured the Ubuntu terminal to run under the root account by default. In the Ubuntu terminal, I'm creating a directory for my October CMS installations. I will now clone the installation script repository into a subdirectory and start the script. The container configuration can take a few minutes. When it finishes, I can open the installation URL in a browser. There are several ways to edit files in the container on Windows. For example, I can start Visual Studio Code right from the Ubuntu terminal using the code command. I can also access the installation directory in Windows Explorer using the WSL mount. Alternatively, I can use the Remote Containers extension for Microsoft Visual Studio Code. If you use the Remote Containers extension, it attaches the Visual Studio Code terminal to the container shell. Another way to attach the code terminal to a container shell is using the attach shell command provided by the Docker extension. In the container shell, I can execute artisan commands and access MySQL. I can also access the database from the host machine using the command line tools or any other tool. When you're ready to license your container, you should obtain a license key on the October CMS website. If you don't have an account, register for free. Create a project or click an existing project. On the License tab, click Buy License. Purchase the license and click Display License Key in the sidebar. Copy the license key. Now I can run the Artisan Project Set command in the container shell to set the license key. And finally, to update the installation and remove all limitations, I will run the Composer Reinstall command. That's it! I can now use the installation for a client's project. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please visit the official October CMS Development Docker image page for more information on installing and using the image. Make sure to subscribe to the October CMS YouTube channel. See you soon!